Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a Whirlpool washing machine. It's a WWDL 6200. I got it, uh, I think, for free a while ago, and it's been sat in the garden for a while. Relatively modern machine. Everything's okay with it, apart from this board. These are expensive, and you can mend them, and I had a go and put in a new resistor, and I don't think it was that, and then a capacitor blew off, or a variable capacitor. One of those blue ones was over was over, over here somewhere, and it blew off, and... I can't be bothered, is the short answer. It's not worth much money, even if it is done up. It's a nice little machine, but I just don't care, which is a terrible thing to say. A board, a new board would cost a lot of money. I could send it away for repair, and that would cost about as much as the machine is worth. It's a shame, but once you start chasing problems like this around on these things, you know, you end up in trouble. These boards are made to the lowest price, and what they do is they skimp on some the quality of some parts. And I understand that they use the lower wattage resistor in some locations, and then I think that brown one's a choke. And so some of these things die, and that's it. The board's dead because of one little component. But of course, Hot Point or Whirlpool, Whirlpool in this case, they love it because they get to sell another one, and another machine typically, because you know they won't recommend replacing one of these on a three-year-old washing machine. So. What I'm going to do today is have a look at wiring the motor to make it run as fast as possible so that we can wreck it with a brick. Which is sad, but that's the world we live in. I would rather see that at the moment than fix it. I've been fixing lots of other machines, so I don't really feel bad about it. And the fact that it was left out means it was probably condemned for scrap anyway. So I've tried to fix it, failed miserably, and now I'm just going to hotwire it. So what I'll do is I'll take the top off, get a look in here, try and use this cable to put straight on the motor, and I think I can get in through the bottom. So let's crack on. A couple of screws here. And while I'm here, I'll take this screw out, because that frees up this clamp on this cable. Depending on the pins on the end of it, I might want that for wiring the motor. Just loosen that by pulling it out, and this should clip off as well. In, yeah, okay. This should pull it back, I think, or up and back or something. Up and forward, maybe. Yeah, and we're in luck. These uh, these connectors in here look ideal. So let's unscrew this suppressor just so that I can get a better look at what I'm doing. There it is. To get these off, you can push up a little tab in here. I think no, I can just pull them off. But I will need to pull this one up. No, nope, just came off. Okay, so that's the cable freed, and I'll take this off. And I'll take this off. Save that for later. That's the suppressor, just in case I need it on another project or another repair. I have to take this one off like this. I have to get these out through here. That could be thrown out. And then we put the machine up and we'll try and wire this motor from beneath. I think I can get in from beneath. So let's see if he's strong enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pony this up onto here and then hike it over sideways onto there. Up onto there. Put a pair of gloves on, maybe. Yeah, it's a shame. I've got a year on this. Let's see the year guy. This is where it all goes wrong. I want to try and lift it up and slide it over without it falling off. Like that. Perfect. Right. Now we can get a look at what we're doing. 
So in here is the motor underneath. So I need the cable that I've just pulled off it. This one. I also need a jumper cable, which is just a little cable with a spade connector or the female version of the spade connector on each end. And I want to get this one out somehow. This connector block. I'm not really worried about damaging this, so I'm just going to go for it. I'm not sure what it's getting stuck on. There it is. Okay. I'll disconnect all these grey wires that go to the controller, and I'll look at this and I'll think, right, what have I got? Seven cables, two reds go to the taco. Then I've got different colours there. I can see that under here the light green goes to a brush, and up here the darker blue light blue even, and the darker blue go to a to brushes. So, if I get my power cord, what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke, poke a hole through here in the back, take off this back plate, do my wiring through there. Take off that back plate. this through here and uh, check out my other videos on for a method on how to do this but we need to put the power in somewhere there's no earth on this one there must be an earth block somewhere else on the motor power in to a brush and out of a coil simple as that and then with the other cable jump from the other brush to a coil if the motor works it should work let's give it a go Plug it in to the Variac, which is a variable voltage transformer. Power on, zero volts. Bring it up. That's it spinning. Power off. Plugged it out. There we go. So all I'm going to do now is put it up, put the top back on, and secure this with it's plugged out. Secure that with a cable tie, just like that, or something there so that it doesn't jump off on me and unplug itself when, when we're moving. I'll get a cable tie all around that, because sometimes, you know, depending on how the destruction goes, these things dance all over the place. So, there you go. That's uh, there's a number on this motor as well, 17831007, week 26 of 2011. So there's a date code. Right, check out my other videos for how to wire other washing machine motors. Check out my washing machine destruction playlist if you like that kind of thing, or subscribe to the playlist, and then when this video of destruction is uploaded, you will get to see it. Thanks for watching. See you later.